If you're a collector or considering getting into collecting, or maybe you just want to learn some really cool new Excel techniques, then I've got a fantastic training for you today. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and today we cover the Collectibles Tracker. This completely from scratch training, along with some absolutely brand new features where we can add tags to any product, filter by tags or anything else, and create unlimited attachments, documents. It's gonna be an incredible training you just won't wanna miss. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic training with some new tips, techniques, and training that I've never shared before. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around for the entire training. We're gonna be building this incredible collectibles tracker. I've had some requests on this. You've got a collection, whether it's coins or sports memorabilia, or whether it's cars or toys or whatever it might be, you can put this in this template. And not only that, I wanna share with you how we can create this. In fact, we're gonna be doing the design entirely from scratch. So I can't wait to share that with you. We're gonna go over an overview of this application template. And then of course, we're gonna be starting on a blank screen. So this is what we're gonna do. I create these trainings each and every Tuesday. This template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below. I just ask a few things. If you can go ahead and click that subscribe button and smash the like button, that would really help us out. And also please comment below. Every single morning I wake up and as I have my coffee, I respond to each and every comment of yours, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, or every single social media, that's the first thing I do because you are so important to me. I love hearing your ideas, your comments, your feedback. Let me know, I'm here for you, what you wanna see. In fact, this template idea came from you, so one of your suggestions, or a few of those, came from you. So that's gonna help me decide what I do in these trainings. All right, so we're gonna get started right away on this. Of course, if you do want to support this channel there are so many ways to do that the first of course is our patreon platform each week i take these templates and then i add on to it i create an additional feature based on your feedback or maybe i fix something or maybe we focus on an area and of course that comes also with an incredible pdf code book so you can study all the code and learn it and create these templates and sell them on your own so that's another way also, we have 300 workbooks. We've reached our 300 workbook template. So if you want every single one of my best templates in a single zip file, and of course that comes with a complete library so you can single click to open a workbook or single click to go to the training video, that's helpful. 300, six years of my best work. All right, so let's get to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over an overview of this, and then we're gonna jump into this blank screen and we're gonna go over that. So here's what we're gonna do. So basically what we have here is we've got a whole collection of items, collectibles, or whatever you want to call them. There, we have a title, we've got a description, and we've got a picture. A single click on that is gonna get us to be able to display the information on that. So we can just simply click click on that, then we have all the information. If we want to filter, if we've got a lot of items, we can create a filter. We can filter based on any type of item, whether it's the name, the status, the current value, the type, you name it, we can do a filter on that. So if we want to filter just something that we want to go shirts or something when we want to see a shirt, we can filter by that. Oh, we don't have any shirts. How about a jersey? A uh, jersey, we, we've got a few of those, so we can filter by that. So we've got five different jerseys. So we've got ultimate filter. We can also clear the filter out. It's going to show all those. Maybe we want to show only those on a wish list if we have any we will show that that means items that we're looking for we don't have any if we make this a wish list item we save it or update it that item is going to show on a wish list here when i select that that's going to show up so that's kind of a nice we can create a new wish list for items that we want that we may not have so that's can be very helpful and so we have that we can filter by anything we want and also what we can do is we can have attachments, right? If I have a, a purchase agreement or authenticity certificate or something like that here, sign so soccer ball, we can create attachments and create unlimited attachments for any type of item. And of course, those attachments can be any type. They can be a picture, they can be a receipt, a Word document. You name it, you can put that here. Now, each item we have individual tags, so that's gonna help us basically create a filter based on that. You can create any type of tag you want, and this is really cool. So if we wanna add a tag to this autograph, right? Maybe we just wanna say it's been autographed. I don't think we have that tag. And we wanna track our items, so we create a tag called autograph, and that's automatically going to save that item, and then it's going to appear down here under autograph right here. So now what we can do is we can now filter by that. So if we go ahead and drop down, we wanna filter by tags, and we wanna know only those that have been autographed, 
we can just type that in right here and then hit enter it's automatically going to show those items that have been autographed oh there's a lot of them that that have tags so that's nice autograph memorabilia so we can show that so that's really really helpful i should have chosen a more unique let's do sample let's do sample tag one so we can see that only this one's going to show up instead of it's a little bit less common so it's going to save that and now when i just type in sample it's going to come up so that's a really really cool feature i really like that having the ability to add tags and of course if we want to remove a tag all we need to do is just click the x here that's going to remove that tag and it's going to be automatically updated so very very cool feature that i'm going to show you i've never taught that before so i can't wait i'm very excited on this training all right, just a little bit of an overview on the admin screen. Admin, we've got a few information. We've got a folder that's going to let us know where those pictures and attachments are stored. Different item types, that's a dynamic list. Cool custom features. I forgot to tell you about this custom fields. We can create up to six custom fields. Collectibles, there's every type of collectible, so I couldn't possibly create fields. So if you take a look at these six fields here website, manufacturer, those are all custom fields here. Not only are those custom fields, forgot to mention that in the intro, not only are those custom fields, but we can create the type. So if we want to create another custom field and we want to call it, let's say, date, uh, date, uh, let's say disposed of, right? Maybe we want to have a disposed of date. We can do date disposed. Now it's a date type field. So we can create a date here and it's a date. Of course, we can adjust this format. So automatically, if we go back in here and we now see the form date disposed, so it's automatically going to be in date format here. So just like that. So that's really cool. So we have custom fields where we can create any custom field and of course the type. So you see a website's automatically been website. We've got dates, we've got uh, value, we've got a percentage. So all of these six fields are completely custom. So not only is the field name custom, but also the format is custom and we can do that from the admin screen. We've got the status, we can create a status and we have attachment types so we different type of attachments relatively simple and the database is pretty much simple we've got a collection database these are all the items item id the name the status description and a bunch of information right these are the same information that's located here no different than that we also have an attachments database that's going to show all the attachments the name the file name extension row so that's it it's a relatively simple not a whole lot of things going on what i'm going to do is i'm going to save this and then we're going to create this from scratch at least design it from scratch and then we're going to go over every line of code i find that to be relatively quick we can still get a good foundation of the design and understand it and then we can go over lines of code so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to move it all the way over to my other screen here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up this blank one right here and i've just got a few different shapes on here that's the only thing i have and that's going to help me because these particular shapes we're going to use the sample that's it that's all I have on this screen so we're gonna create everything else from scratch right now just a few formats have already been done to save a little time columns a and B are gonna be for admin if you've watched my trainings before some of you are used to this you already know and that's actually a very good thing because I want you to be very familiar with the way that we do things here so that you can recreate them easily here we are going to have a collectibles this is our list so we're gonna call that collectibles now it's in white format already so I'm gonna go all the way up here to the formula bar and I'm going to type that in collectibles and so we're gonna have a list of collectibles there and then what we're gonna do is we can just format these so that way we can see them and that's gonna be our dark green so we're gonna have a dark green and I also want here inside here we're gonna put our attachments and pictures so we'll put attachments and we'll do all in capitals attachments and attach pictures and attachments and documents okay so that's fine so we can put the pictures attachments pictures and documents we'll do we got enough space so we can do all that attachments pictures and documents okay so we've got that here, but we can't see it because it's not formatted so what we're going to do is i'm um, the first thing what i'm going to do so we can see it i'm going to enter the background now i created this background on mid journey and i've got to build that background's a dark green so having that dark green background is going to help us see that white font so i'm going to insert that and that's going to do there we go so now we can see what we're doing here kind of uh, important and helpful okay so what we don't want to see is we don't need the grid line so i'm going to go into the view and take off the grid lines and so we kind of got now i created this in mid journey a lot of get a lot of people ask me how do you create these i create them in mid journey so that's really helpful it's an ai generated uh, photo and picture all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to insert that title i'm going to do the shapes here i'm going to do text here and this is going to be a stretch all the way across and we're going to call this collectibles tracker so it's going to be collectibles tracker hopefully i'll spell that right and we're going to increase the font here and i'm going to drop this down here so that we can see the tabs and commands and i'm going to change this to the aerial rounded that's kind of a common one that i've been using and that's kind of a nice one so rounded bold mt 
and I'm going to center that both ways. I'm going to increase the font to 30. We want that font color in white and I'll probably add a shadow to that and I also want to go into the shape format. We do not want any fill on that and we do not want any outline on that. I also want to create a shadow on that just so it stands out a little bit and then we can although you can't really see it but that's going to be fine we can actually make that a little bit larger here okay so now we have we're going to stretch that all the way across the entire screen and it's going to go right about here so i'm going to use that entire space today so we're going to cover that and bring that up to the top and that'll cover row one okay in row two is primarily going to be our button set so i'm going to put a button set all the way up here and then here we're going to have our formatted items so here what i'd like to do in i starting we're just going to start out in i i'm going to put that item name so item name it should be already in the white font which is going to help us out so with that item and i also want to know the current value so current value and uh, drop it down we're going to be skipping rows and then the description will go in here and when it's in white font you can't see as i type but you can look up the formula bar and see it there right there okay so we got the description here we don't we don't need there's only more than one description so that shouldn't be plural next up all the way what we're going to do is we want a, a column for our field and the information there then we're going to skip a column and then in here we're going to put in the status so i want to know the status of that drop one down i also want to know the type what item type is it we can create that custom list this is for description and then we're going to drop it down and i'll be coloring these white when the user enters that so also inside 11 we want the last valuation i'm going to put that last valuation that means what's what's it worth when was it valued and next up i'm going to put this is going to be a wish list item so i'm going to put wish list and i'll put a checkbox there wish list item okay okay next up i want to know when it was a, who is acquired from so i'm going to type that in acquired from who or what company and then i also want to put in when it was acquired so i want to know when we acquired that okay acquired on the date and then next up skipping a row we also want to know the cost of it so we're going to put a acquired cost and then overall again on the right next column we want to put the sales price if we have sold it or if there's a sales price we want to put that in here skipping a row down i want to know if it was sold or traded to if we gave it to a person that's important and next up we also want to know the the date it was sold on so sell date or sale date sale date okay now what we're going to do is we're going to go into those custom fields so next up those are all for the static but what is the custom field so i'm going to put equals since it is custom it's going to be based on the admin screen based on right here that's the field name so admin f7 so i'm just going to copy that here and then i'm going to go so that's going to be the website up here is going to be the next one so it's going to be f8 right that's where based on the admin screen and then next up here i'm going to skip one and then of course this is going to be f9 which is the next one down first offered then custom field four which is located in f11 7 8 10 10 10 so 10 then 11 and then 12. okay so then we're going to go here this will be the 11th one f11 and then lastly the f12 so those are all of our custom fields we can put those in okay next up let's take a look at this at 12. okay as we see that this one's zero and why is it zero well because there's nothing there so what if i want to show something other than that how do i do that well we can just copy this okay and then what we're going to be doing is we want to check to see if the field if admin f12 equals empty then what are we going to show i want to show the column before so that would be e12 so admin and then we're going to put the exclamation mark e which is the column below 12. that's what i want to show otherwise show admin f12 and what that's going to do is going to put custom field six now i'm just going to make the update for the other fields okay great so i just added it that same formula to all the fields here so you can see that and now basically anytime we remove the if we remove the the field name it's going to default to custom field in this case custom field four and that's exactly what i want to see right here okay perfect that's exactly what i want now continuing on so we have those we also want to add another place for tags so i'm going to put in tags here it's going to where our tags are going to go and we want a large space for our tags so we can just create a large space now i'm going to have this white we're going to go all the way down to row 32 which is fine okay so not only that but i want to color everything else white we want to give those fields with using an entry so i'm going to hold down the control button and on each of these fields i'm simply going to select the cell so that we can color the background white and perhaps give it a border now the description is going to be a large field and the type here and so okay so that's going to take down that white background and if we want we can assign a border to that so we're going to do the format the cells i've got a standard color here that we're going to be using i'm going to use this dark green here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the the upper the right 
and the bottom and then of course the left is going to take on a dotted same color okay very good so now i also want to color the field names that same color so that way there's uniformity among the field names so these labels here will take on that color as well that same dark green color so i'm simply going to hold down the control this is a merge cell and all of those along with the headers up here that's going to take on that dark green color here Okay, so we can see that it's starting to come into focus here. Now, also, all these, I would like to give it a little bit of a border on that, a white border. So I'm going to just undo that just for a second, fill it, and undo allows me to basically keep the selection on all of them, which I really want to do. You can use Control-1, and that's going to launch that format cell. So I'm going to go with the border. And this time, I'm going with a white border, and I'm going to go with a white border on the upper, the left, and the lower. And then we can do right on some of them and then let's click okay okay i like that but on these i also want to have the full white border also on the right side just on these two here so again control one and then this time we're going to go on that right side border click okay the white's hard to see okay that's looking pretty good we've got our field set up we've got our description let's check the spelling okay that looks very good so now what else do we want to have i want to have on the right side we're going to have a little bit of a picture so i want the picture to show up right about here so we'll just put a little bit of a border around that we can go all the way down to here so i do want a border we can drop that down here and then just put a white border all the way around that if we want to color and keep a constant border we can select the white one here and then of course we can do all the borders around the surrounding borders okay and then we'll just do the outside borders so that's where our picture is going to go somewhere around like that okay the admin session here these columns will take on just a little bit but we don't have too much to add so let's go ahead and add that information now the first each item has its own item id so i want to put in when i select an item i want to put that item id so i'm just going to put the selected selected item id here i also want to know the row selected item row i want to know the database row that that's associated and i also want to know the next item id here i also want to know if we're going to show the wish list show wish list okay that's going to be a true or false and it's going to be connected to a checkbox so we'll have that in there after that i would like to show the selected attachment row we're going to put a name there i'm going to skip and then i also want to know here there's going to be a wish list so we're going to basically add two of them onto that let's update that i'm going to format these cells control one will get that and i'm just going to put that white border on the end and then okay so now that looks good so what i would like to do is i'd like to enter checkboxes both for the collectibles up here showing the wish list up here and i would like to show wish list item down here however let's go ahead and put that inside so i'm going to go into the developers here i'm going to go into the insert here and i'm going to insert this checkbox here so the first one's going to be right here so that's going to be showing with list. now notice that there's some black text on it you can see it here i really don't need any text i've got already the text so with this checkbox three we can just backspace and get rid of that and we can extend this all the way over so that it covers the entire thing so if it's a wish list item we want the user to then simply check this okay i'm going to use Control d i'm going to duplicate that and i'm going to bring one up here now this one doesn't have any text and this is a merchant cell so what can we do well of course we can use another text here so we can use a shape we can use a text box here to do that i just want to make sure that it's underneath so i'm going to put that in here i'm going to put a text box in here and that text box is going to say something called show wish list and of course we don't want it in black font we want it the same font and everything else as we have so we need to format that accordingly so what we're going to be doing is going into the shape no fill no border and then also we want that white font okay perfect so that's exactly what not the only difference is i want this checkbox on top so i'm going to set it up this bring to front i'm going to select that and that way when we put it there we can select it so let's just bring that so the checkbox looks good it's in the right space we're going to zoom in i want that text box to also show up exactly in the middle so to bring that up oh, let's bring it up here and we can bring it up in the middle so we're going to show that in the middle and we can left justify that and then just move that over okay so very good so now when we have this we just click anywhere on here we can see but we want some cells connected to that and that's exactly what we're going to do now both of them need connected cells so the first one this show wish list here i want this one to be connected to this cell b5 so we're going to right click format control and we're going to set the cell link as b5 and we're going to click OK. Now, when we select it, we're going to see B5 go from true to false. OK, good. So we can color these now. That way, they're, they're going to get. I'm just going to select the 
set the line color to automatic for now and color all of them and we're going to give it a little bit of a, a color here so that they can stand out we know which ones are going to be admin okay show wish list that's good let me just uh, update that so i'm just going to bring it up here i, I want to center this one should be centered a little bit bring it down a little bit i'm kind of picky that way all right, all right good so the next time we also have another one that we need to assign and that's going to be the wish list item that means for this particular wish list item is it on a wish list this one is going to be a different cell and that's going to be here under b11 so we're just going to put in wish list and then it's going to be right here in b11 so we're going to right click that again format control and then that cell link is simply going to be b11 clicking ok all right we can give that that same color here and then moving on we also have i want to know tags so i'm going to put in a tag now these tags are going to take on a value this does not need to be merged and centered uh, there's going to be actually nothing in this cell there'll be shapes on top of that as you saw in the sample but i need to know what the tag data is what does the tag data look like it looks something like this here this is tag data right here let's expand column u these are tag data so it's basically in the same cell and they're just comma separated values so that's what the tag data is. so i need to put that data somewhere and then what we'll do is we'll take this data and we'll convert it to shapes so we need to have it somewhere and i want to put it directly inside b25 scooch on over here oh that's the admin screen let's go here b25 i'm going to put in what's called tags that value is going to go directly in b25 okay next up i also want to know a picture there's a, each individual item has its own picture and the value of that picture the name is going to go right in here again so we're going to give it a color that's it for the admin as far as that we do need a formula here for the item row if we take a look inside this collector's database we see that we have individual item ids i've created already a named range for that a dy dynamic named range called item id if i tab here we can see that it encompasses all the item ids using the offset formula so what we can do to determine the row notice it starts on row four so we're going to go into here assuming that we have selected item id one we're going to write an equals if error match what are we matching we're matching this item id and we're matching it based on the item id named range that we've created we want an exact match but i want row four so i need to add three if there's no value if there's an error i'm going to use empty okay so we also want to know the next item id I've gone over these things so many times but that's how we learn maximum it's okay if this is your first time happy to share happy to do that I want the maximum i want to get the next available item id so item id we want the maximum they have to be numerical values plus the next one so it'd be plus one so if, if the maximum is 27 and i want the next one i want to show 28. if there's no data in this list it could create an error because there's no data at all so we want to default it to one and that's just what we're going to do so the next available is 31. so we see that they've gone up to 30 so we know the next available one is 31. there's many ways to do that that is my favorite way selected attachment row this can be the row that we when we select a row here i want that row to show up here I believe i've got some conditional formatting if not we will create it already let's take a look in some of this conditional formatting here i may not have cleared it out for my sample to save a little time i've got some conditional formatting for alternating rows for odd rows i want to color it light green assuming that there's data in column o and for even rows i want to color it white assuming that there's data in column o the selected row is going to be based on b6 when a user selects it that row is going to be put in b6 once it does it's going to show up so how does that look if o contains a value that gets colored okay so it's going to start in 04 so we need to make that adjustment so let's say oh we need the headers here so that's right i almost forgot okay so let's color the headers in here we got to color those headers and we're going to give it that white border font so control one here and we're going to use the white inside and outside that's clicking okay we're going to give it we're going to call this the name we're going to call this the type and we're going to call this description okay so those are our subheaders under for those attachments and we've got that okay so as we see the alternating rows now when we select rows such as eight we want that selected so you notice it's going to have that dark green color okay very good so i like the way that that looks we oh, we're almost ready to add in our button sets we're going to need a bunch of buttons for that and of course we need a nice logo up here which i've had okay so things are looking pretty good this is a relatively easy design that way we're pretty quick on it today saving our work so far that's always important now we'll go ahead and insert the buttons then we'll insert the icons and pictures okay so the first thing we're going to do is insert and we're shapes and we're just going to use this square rectangular shape and we'll this will be one for the add new so we'll start that off and we'll give it a standard color 
The height is going to be 0.25 on that because we don't have too much space here. We don't need a border, so no outline on that. We'll give it a standard uh, shape fill color of this. Give it that light green color. We can go probably a shade darker on that here so it's consistent with our theme. Okay, so then we're going to type in add new. All right, now we can format that accordingly. Of course, it's not going to take on that white font. It's going to take on the black here, and we want that in the middle, and we want it right justified. Okay, so we can actually change that to add new item. Okay, then what we want to do is we want to duplicate, create the buttons, then the icons in that order. So that looks good for the add new item. I'm going to use control D and then we need another one for save or update. So I'm going to place that right here and we can probably increase this a little bit. It seems a little bit high, a little bit too close together. I think we're a little bit heavy on this one here. So I'm going to reduce that a little bit. Okay, that looks good. All right, so now what we want to do is we've got that the button height good. I'm going to change this to save or update and then we need one for deleting we need to be able to delete an item so i'm going to duplicate that and bring that right here we're going to call that delete item so delete item that button's a little bit big we can zoom in to get those other handles on the buttons that we need that's perfect and now what we can do is we need one for adding and opening attachments so i'm going to use Control d duplicate that and uh, we have add attachments so i'm going to change this to add attachments and i believe i've got one already that was kind of hidden for our delete attachments and i'll show you that in a moment okay so this one's going to be called add attachments and then i want to duplicate that and we're going to need one more for open i want to open if i select an attachment regardless i want to be able to open it so open just simply selecting attachment and opening it okay that looks good now i believe i've had one what i'm going to do is i'm going to show the selection pane here i want to display that and I think I have one here called delete attachment. I'm going to show you that because I just didn't delete that. But basically all it is is right here. Just the delete. So when I select something, I want this icon to show up so that I can actually delete that attachment. Okay, so that's going to work just fine. So that's available there. So open, add, and I also want to add a picture too. If I, I want to add a main picture. So in other words, each item can have as many attachments as we want. So that's fine. Then what I want to do is I want to add, add a button. So let's go ahead and put that up here. So we have attachments and we also have a main picture. So I'm going to duplicate that. And for the main picture, we need to create that. So we're add it. So we're going to call this add main picture, add uh, main. I put main because item picture, we may have additional item pictures in the attachments picture. So this is our main one. You could call it default one. And then I'm going to delete that and we can just put clear main picture if we want to do that clear picture that's probably not necessary but if we want to delete it or clear it that's fine okay all right so we can do that now let's shrink that up here and now for this main picture what i would like to do is i'd like to create a shape for that as opposed to just uh, placing the shape directly inside here as opposed to uh, placing the picture another way to do that is insert a shape this is kind of a nice if the pictures are relatively the same size so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a box here and i want it relatively square so let's do let's say width uh, i want the height about 3.3.85 3.85 same okay that looks good but i'm just going to then take those borders i want them about basically i want it centered in here so i'm just going to take the borders here and I'm going to format them all in white. I'm going to remove this one here, and I'm going to use that white on the bottom. What that's going to do is just give a nice consistent border all the way around here. And so basically what I want to do is I want to fill this. Let's update that border here. I want to fill that. I want to color it white, and then whatever is our picture, I want to then fill it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to change the border on here, selecting that, going to the format. That outline will be our default color, that dark green color. Our fill is going to be white. What we're going to do is i'm going to show or hide this if there's a picture so i want to take this shape and i want to fill it with that picture it's kind of a nice way of doing it it's a little bit easier in code because i don't have to position this anywhere i just have to fill it so it's actually less code if you're okay now in instances when it might not work is if you've got horse some vertical some horizontal or they're really different sizes you may not want to do it but it's a great way it's a nice way to do it and i like to share with you new ideas okay that looks pretty good we're good i want to add one more this one's going to be for the tag so I'm going to just duplicate this here and then I'm going to create a tag here. So I'm going to go all the way down. This is going to be a small one and I'm just going to call this add tag. Okay. And we're going to make this quite small because I want to fit it in there like that. And I'm going to zoom in here all the way in to make sure I get that third handle in the middle and then bring it. I want enough room for our icon. We can bring that in. Okay. It's looking really good. We've got the basis for our, we're ready for our icons and ready for our logo here because I think everything looks good. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert picture 
and this device here obviously and we're going to go to some icons here I've got a bunch saved up here and I'm just going to select them all except for the heart that was some idea for the wish list, but I'm not using that. And I'm going to put insert. I'm going to set all the uh, heights and widths to point two. That's going to set that default. And then we're just simply going to place them. Now, the reason we do this after creating our buttons is because we want it to show up on top of the button. So I'm just going to bring this here so that I can see them. This is going to be good for add items. This one we're going to use for the add um, attachments here. Oops, not add item. We'll use that here. And then we want the attachments. We'll use the paper clip for that. And we'll zoom in a little bit more so it's clear. Then we'll want a clear filter. I think I forgot to create a button on that. I do need that. I'm going to use this button here. I'm just going to duplicate it because I got the size right. Then I'm going to bring this up here. I'm going to place it right here. So what I mean is when you create the buttons after, look, it, it's behind it. So it's just one more step to place it in front. It's not a huge deal. Okay, so what we're going to do is just going to put in clear, the word clear. And that's going to be our clear filter button. We'll size it up accordingly in just a moment. So the save and update, we're going to put use this checkbox. This uh, X, I'm going to use this X for, actually, I've already got it here. I'm going to use this X for in our sample. And I've got that already way down here, here. In our sample I'm gonna make sure I've got it here so it's right here okay good so we're gonna put that up I've already got an X here we're going to use that for our tags okay the uh, recycle we already have probably don't need that what I do want to have is the folder I want to add a main picture open the attachment we can use that for the main picture we're going to use that here and also for the tags we're gonna use this one right here we'll make it a little bit smaller and I think we got these covered I've already got the delete right here it's already assigned and I've already got this sample tag here, this X here. Let's go ahead and look for that. Anytime you want to find a picture, you can just go into, if you're not sure where it is, just go into the selection pane. And I've got one called delete tag. So what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to look for that one. And that's the one we want. Okay, no problem. We're going to use this one here. We're going to call this delete tag sample. So we'll call it delete tag sample. We need to create a sample. We're going to be deleting those tags. So I want to put that on here. We'll call it delete. And then what I'm going to do is, oh, we've already got it here. So it's right behind this shape there. Okay, good. And we'll drag it over here. Okay, that's good. I found it. And we can get rid of this one. No need for that. Continuing on, we can get rid of this. We've got all of our shapes and icon. Now all we need to do is set them up accordingly and place them. All right, so we've got add items. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We'll get everything set up. First thing what we want to do is we want to size our our buttons accordingly and then place and size our icons accordingly a little bit smaller we're going to center those here and then we're going to group them together we're going to do the same thing with each one of those we're going to place them in make sure that they're centered and then grouped and then individually so we want to size the button accordingly make sure we have enough room for the icon make sure they're in the middle group them the delete button we certainly need that i'm We've got that here. Let's place that directly in here. We've got it here. Okay, continuing on. So I want to add that in here and then make sure it's right justified. Center that here and then group them together. The add attachment, just like the same. Bring it over. Make sure we've got the spacing right. And then it can go relatively quick if you go in the right order. We can bring that back here. Open the attachment, looking good. And then add the main picture. This will be for the main picture. We'll go be going over all those macros. The design here is relatively simple. And the last thing is I want to clear the picture. We're going to duplicate this and then paste it over here. We do need a one for that. Okay, we'll use both clear picture, centering that, grouping that together. Okay, we want to line everything up so it looks really nice. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use my selection. And I'm going to go over all of these, not the title there, not this one here. But I want to make sure that they're all in the middle. So that's that's good the way we've done it there. And then bringing it up. OK, that's looking good. We're going to bring these over here. We want to be able to add picture. We want to open add attachments, delete item. Everything's looking good. Now, one more important thing is we also want to be able to make sure that these don't move or size with the cells. So we're going to all do be doing that. This tag also. And we also want to do the filter. So I'm going to be grouping those. Once we get everything grouped, then individually, we could also group them if we want to, but it may not be necessary in this case. All right, that's looking good. I like the way that that looks. We can continue on. Once we have all those, what we're going to use, we're going to use our selection pane here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to highlight all the shapes here. We're going to go control one. We're going to go into the properties here. And then we're going to make sure it's moved, but don't size with cells. And that way, as we change the column widths or something, the shapes or the buttons will not change as well. 
can turn off the selection pane and zoom it to back to 100%. We've got our screen pretty much set. Okay, very good. So what's the first thing we want to do? Well, we want to make sure that we've got all our admin set up right. That's correct. We want to make sure that everything's connected. If I select here, that's correct. We've got our tags here. That's going to go in here. Our picture is going to go in here. That's data. We've got everything that's looking pretty good here, ready to get started. So what's the first thing we want to do? We've got some data in here, collectibles data. We've got all our data. What I'd like to do is I would like to have this data appear inside here, but I want it to appear in shapes, not in the cell. So in shapes. So the best way to do that is to create a sample shape and then have that shape duplicated. I did that already. Let's bring it over here just so we can see it. We can bring it in the main screen. So I'm going to have two shapes. The first shape is going to take on that description, the information. The second shape is going to take on the picture. So what I'd like to do is I have that first shape here. This is the sample called sample item shape. This is the one that we're going to be duplicating. And I've got another one called here shape and it's got a border around it here. So we can increase that and I'll basically want it to be about the same as here, but we don't necessarily need a border on it. I only have a border right now just so you can understand. So the idea is to take the item name, that item name is going to come directly from here and I want the item description and whatever can fit inside this shape. I want to take the item picture. The item picture is in a folder. Of course, we have all of those items. I've got them inside a folder. It looks like that. Okay, so I want to take that item picture and I want to place it, fill this shape with it. It's called sample item picture. And if we were to do it without VBA, it would look something like this. Control one, we are going to go the fill. We are going to use a picture or text fill. We're going to insert the picture. We're going to browse for a file. We're going to locate that and it would be here in this folder here, our picture folder right here. There it is. And then what I want to do is just fill it and click insert. And that's exactly what I want to happen. But we don't want a border around there. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the format and where it says the picture outline here, we can get rid of that. So we don't need any picture border, no outline on that. And that's fine. Okay, so that's exactly what I would like to happen. And I want to do it. However, if there's no picture, we can just leave it blank. So for this sample, I do want to remove that picture. If we want to remove that picture, we could just put no fill on that. And that's sufficient for us. Okay, great. So that's exactly what we're going to happen. But it's going to be based on some filters. Now we need to create those filters and set up those filters. And that's what we're going to do right now. I want to create those filters. So those filters are going to get created directly underneath here. So right here and here is where we're going to be creating our filters. So the first filter that we want, I'm going to give these a color. In fact, I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to paste it directly in here and here. And that's where we're going to paste it. Actually, we can do both things here. Copy this here and here and then paste them and that way we'll set the formats up and we'll get and change it. So what are we going to be? The first filter is I want to know what item type is it, right? What what is the what are we going to be filtering by? So it's something like we'll call it filter by, right? Filter by. Next up, what is the filter value? What is the what are we filtering? What's the information that we're going to filter? So we can use filter or something like that. We can also use search or filter or anything, anything that makes any sense is fine. Okay, so we need to know what we're filtering it by and that's going to go, let's put this sample. Uh, we should probably put a fill in it. Otherwise, we can't, otherwise it's going to, we won't be able to see it. That's not going to be helpful. White, white color is sufficient. Okay, and also I don't necessarily like to put it in the hidden, these shapes, because they might get squished if we unhide them. So we'll just bring it down here. Oops, I duplicated that. No need for that. And then we'll just bring it over on the right side, but we know it exists. We know we're going to be duplicating that and we know we're going to be placing that direct based on some filters information. So the filter by what do we need? We're filtering it by basically any type of header. We could filter by item name, by status, by value, by type, description, you name it. So what I need is all those headers in a list and I've got that right here. This list has it already. So I've made that. We're going to look in the formulas. We're going to look at the name manager and we're going to see that we have something called item headers. So we tab over that. We've got item headers there. So it is that data validation that we're going to be using. So I'm going to then go back into click. I'm going to select here, right on here, this cell here, which is going to be E4. And I'm going to then go into data here and then data validation. We're going to do list and we're going to do item headers. Now, if we forgot the name, we don't remember, we can use F3. That's going to help us click item headers and click OK and click OK. All right, so now when the user can select basically any name and then they can filter by here and then we want the results to appear here within shapes. So that's exactly what we're going to do. But to get that, what we need is we need to have an advanced filter. Basically, what we need to do is we need to filter 
all of these items by that criteria. Now, keep in mind that that criteria is the item name, right? So for example, this, we're going to be filtering by item name, but what if we want to change it? What if we want to filter by, uh, let's say, tags or something? So we need that criteria to change automatically. So now it says tags. So we can simply link that cell E4. If E4 equals empty, then we're just going to show item ID, which is in Y2, Y2 item ID. That's what I want to show because every item has an ID. Every item has an ID, so we can use that as basically a default filter. Meaning, if this is blank, I want it to show item ID, just like it is here. And we're going to do the same thing here. Now, the value that the user searches for is going to be directly from G4, meaning G4. So if they put in a one here, they, or search by something, it's probably general or something, not necessarily value, but either way, it's okay, whatever it is. So now I want that same value to show up here, but by asterisk if possible, because they can show with tax, so we can show any value with a one. However, if it is left blank, then I want to show basically anything that's possible, basically anything which is the less than or greater than. So how are we going to do that? If G4 equals empty, show less than or greater than, which means any value, or what I want to do is show what the user has entered in G4, and I want to wrap that around the asterisk, which is the wild card, meaning anything before or anything after. So, for example, if they search for a name, let's say they're looking for an item name, and they want to know any item name that contains the word ball, we can go in there, and we can see they're now searching any item for the ball. And also, we want to make sure the wish list is true. Now, this wish list is going to be based, are they searching wish list or not? So, if they unselect this, it's going to be false. So, B5 is false, meaning they want to search by items that are not on the wish list. So, we also need to track that. And basically, this is linked to b5 so if b5 oops if b5 is going to be true it'll show true here this is going to be our criteria we want the results of that advanced filter to come in here we want to show the item id the item name the description and the picture these are important the item id is that unique value that separates them the item name will go inside that shape the item description will go in the shape and the picture will be displayed on another sheet so all that's very important we want the results of that to come here when we have those results, we're going to loop through those results and we're going to create shapes and position the shapes inside here in two columns, both in column D and then column F or, or about like that. And we want it in two columns and we want to show up right here. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. And we're going to do that with a macro. Now that macro, when does that macro run? The macro runs when we click clear filter or the macro runs when we make a change to here or the macro runs when we also save a brand new one or save an existing one and we click save. So the macro is going to run on several instances. So let's take a look inside that macro now. That'll be the first macro that we're going over. Okay, into the developers tab. If you don't have the developers tab available, just go into the file here into the options and have a look inside the customized ribbon and make sure that the developer is selected here. There's a shortcut Alt F11 will also get you into the Visual Basic. I've got two of them open. One's the sample on my other screen. So we're going to close this one out. We're going to focus on the modules. We've got several modules an admin attachment and the collection collectibles tracker. These items here, the collectible items tracker. This is the one we want to focus on the modules. And the first one is called items list items now item list items is the macro that's going to then list all the items here within those shapes so that's the one we want to focus on now when we create these shapes we first thing we want to do when we refresh this list is delete all the existing shapes and pictures of course we want to make sure that we are not deleting that sample that sample right here we want to make sure that we're not going to be deleting the sample item shape or the one called sample item pictures. So we want to make sure. But we are going to, what we'll do is we're going to, when we create them, we'll give them unique names so that we can then delete those unique names. So those unique names are called C-O-L-L item, collect, collect an item, or the collectible picture. So what we want to do is we're going to create an item shape. Now this item shape, this variable, is already dimensioned as a shape. So what we want to do is loop through all of the item shapes within the shapes of that particular sheet. This is the sheet that we're focused on. This is our collectibles tracker sheet. Collectible sheet is the one that we'll be working with. We're going to wrap it in on our resume next and on our go to zero because when we do remove one, it would create an issue. If this is deleted and we try to run it for this, it would create an issue. Wrapping it in on our resume next 
and on error go to zero avoids that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check that name. If that name contains the word C O L L item, we're going to delete it. If it take if it contains C O L L pick, we're going to delete it. So this is for the picture and this is for the item. So we're going to delete those. So we delete all of them in the shape. Okay, the next up, what I want to do is I want to get some variables. I need to know where those pictures are located. If we take a look here, we see that the pictures are located inside this folder here. Whoops. If we see we're going to take the pictures located inside this folder, that is the same folder that's located inside our admin right here. We can browse for that folder and we can browse and we can see that it's in there. So what we want to do is I want to take that cell, this cell D3, and we called it picture folder, picture folder. We're going to create that named range and put that into the variable picture folder. Now make sure that PIC folder and picture folder are not the same name. They should be very different to create uh, issues. So we're going to put it around brackets. That's the same thing as the name. If you have a named range, we can put brackets around it. So we're going to take that picture folder and put it into a string variable called pick folder. I also want to set the default top position. Now we want to create these shapes, but we need to set the initial position where it's going to be. That top position is going to be right around here under D5 or D6. So we're going to set that initial top position based on D6, cell D6. We also want to set the initial left position based on. So that's that will change as we go through the items, but we want to set them initial. Okay, we're going to focus primarily on this database. Now we based on this and this, we already have our values here inside our criteria here as we link them here. And so what we want to do is we want to create a based on the original data. So that original data is located A3 all the way over to, whoa, too far, all the way over to V. Column V is where we have, we can shrink this column up. We don't need to see all those tags. So that's where our, criteria, our original data all the way to V. Our criteria is going to be in AA2 through AB3, and our results are going to come AF through AI. So we're going to create that advanced filter. But first thing we need to do is determine the last available row. If it's less than four, that means we have no items, and we can exit out of the sub. We're going to create that advanced filter from uh, starting column A, row three is our header row, all the way through V. The, the criteria is AA2 through A, B3, just as I'd mentioned to you. And those results are gonna come AF2 through AI2. Once we get those results, I need to determine the last row of those results based on column AF. If it's less than three, then we can exit the sub because there's no data. If it's less than four, then we can skip the sort. Now I do wanna sort them based on the name. It's nice to have the alphabetical order. So I'm gonna base it on name. And so that item name from A to Z. To do that, we're going to set the sort. First thing we do is clear any sort, and we're going to set that uh, key based on AG3. AG3, that's that first item name here. So that's, and we're going to set it ascending A to Z. The range is going to be AF3 through AI. That's our sort range, and then we're going to apply that sort. So it's going to sort them alphabetically. Now we're going to simply loop through all, starting with three, going to the last results row. We're going to extract some information and put it into these string variables. Item ID is going to come from column F. Item name from AG. AH is going to take on the item description. And the picture name is going to be an AI. Now, because we have that picture name, I need to create a full picture path, right? That picture path is based on that picture folder and the backslash and the picture name. That's that full picture path. If for some reason the picture folder or the picture name is empty, then the picture path, we're just going to set that picture path to empty. If the picture path equals empty or the picture directory, right? I'm just going to, or the, the directory, meaning it's an incorrect path. And we use the directory and we check it based on the, if it's empty, that means we have an incorrect file book. We have something, but it's an incorrect path. In that case, we're going to set the picture path to empty. And that's the test we're going to run a little bit later on whether we want to insert the picture or not is going to be based on this picture path. If this picture path is empty, we will not be inserting a picture. Okay, so now the first thing what we want to do is we are now ready. We have all the information. We're going to take this shape here, this sample item shape. We're going to duplicate it and we're going to give it a very unique name. So that column shapes, sample item shape, duplicate it. That unique name is going to be based on column called the col item call keep saying column the collection or collectibles tracker collectibles item that item id is also going to make it unique because every time we're going to get a brand new item id so this will give it a very unique name once we've duplicated it and created that shape we can work with it with right here inside the text we're going to give it the text that item name is going to go on the first line 
We're going to add a second line, V, B, C, R, L, F will create this line below. And then the item description is going to go in the line below. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to determine, are we going to be placing it here or here, right? If I, let's say, control D, I'm going to duplicate that, right? So I've got enough space to put in two columns, right? So how do I know which one goes where? Well, we notice that column three, we're in row three, so we're looping through all the rows. The first one's three, then four five, six, so on and so forth, right? So that's basically what I want. I want to have three here, then four here, then I want to have the fifth row here, and so on and so forth. So how do I know that? Well, I know if it's three, five, it's going to end up here. If it's four, six, it's going to end up here. So I know that even, even rows are going to be on the right side. Odd rows are going to be on the left side. That's how we alternate. And so to do that, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we adjust the left position. If it's even, if it's an even, I want to adjust, I want to move it to the right. If it's odd, I want to keep it on the left. So that's how we differentiate. How do we know if it's odd or even? We can use the mod to determine that. We're basing it on that result row. That result row is three, four, five, six. So we're going to base it on the result row. If the result row mod of two equals zero means the remainder is zero, meaning it's even. Let's just put this even. Even, we know it should show up on the, 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 right, the right column. If it's odd, it's going to be on the left column. So if it's even, what we're going to do is we're going to set the left position equal to the left position plus the entire width plus 3. Right. So we have the left position here plus the entire width plus 3. It's going to move it a little bit over here. So that's exactly what we're going to do to set that. So for anything that's even, we're going to appear in the, in the right column. Okay, great. So that's all we need to do. Else, what if it's a left position? If it's a left position, if it's if if it's odd, let's put odd rows. Simply set the left position based on the left. Okay, and the top position is going to be based on the top position. Okay, so what that's going to do is going to set and place our shape. Next up, we're going to focus on the pictures. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate. Even if the picture doesn't exist, I'm still going to duplicate this shape called sample item pick. I still want to duplicate it and just place it here. Even you can't see it. It's here. Even if the picture doesn't appear. Okay, so we're going to first thing we're going to duplicate it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on that duplicated shape for the picture, our collection picture item and the item ID. If the picture path does not equal empty, then we're going to fill that shape, fill based on the user picture, based on that picture path. Assuming it's, remember I said we're going to check to make sure it's not empty. Then we're going to fill it. Okay, then I also want to place that. Where do I place that? Now, again, if it's odd, where are we going to place it? I'm going to place it right over. If it's even, I'm going to place it here. If it's odd, uh, odd column, I'm going to place it right here. So we need to adjust that left position. Again, if it's an even, even row, and this is going to be for the odd row. So if it's an even row, we want to make sure to place it on the right column. So it's going to be based on the left position. Plus, I need to know the entire width of the shape. That's the shape, not this shape. The entire width of this shape, right? So that means if I'm going to add the left position, plus the entire width, would put it right about here, plus the entire width all the way minus the width. So let's look at that here. Plus the entire width again. So basically, it's the same shape, two widths. So one width is here, two widths is here, plus three a little bit, and then we're going to move it over a little bit, minus the width minus the width. So that's basically minus the width of that shape, right? If it's plus, why are we minusing the width? Because it'd be right here. If I add it here and here, it's going to be right here. But if I subtract the width here, it's going to be right about here. Okay, that's exactly what I want to do. Subtracting the width of this shape right here to place it directly on that here. Okay, and that's all we need to do. Okay, because this gets created after, it will appear on top of it. And that's exactly what I want. So otherwise, what if it's an if it's an odd, we're simply going to place it on the left position plus the width minus the width. In other words, the left position of here plus the width of this, which would be right here, minus the width. So bring it over here like that. So that's all we have to do to place it correctly in there. Okay, then we also want to set the top position. The top position equals the top position plus one. Why does that mean? I just want to add a little bit of space for the next, right? So the top position equals the top position plus one. So we're incrementing that just a little bit. Okay, next up, if the result mod row equals two, then we're going to set the top position increment. So we're increasing the top position here. So, oh, this top position here, sorry, I just want to make that clear. I don't want it exactly on the top. I want it a little bit lower. Basically, on the top position would be here. I want it a little bit lower. Just one pixel. That's all that we do. So now what we want to do is now we need to go to the next row below. When do we need to go to the next row below? 
we need to go to the next row below when we've done that even, right? So if it's even, we then need to go to the next row below. Odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, okay? So when it's even, we need, so again, we're going to test if the mod, the result mod row 2 equals even, meaning it's even, then we need to update that top position based on the top position plus the height of the shape plus 5. And so what that's going to do, it's going to say the top position plus the height of it, the height plus 5. It's going to put it right down here. So that's where update that top position automatically so that's going to set up and that's all we need to do okay so that's it that's very easy for the macro when do we run this macro this macro gets run at a few times it gets run when I make a change to G when I make a change here or I make a change to here or it gets run when I save an update so it gets or when I clear it out so let's take a look it's going to run on change event remember when I make a change here I want it to run so that's going to be G4 or perhaps e4 so let's look in the change event that's exactly when we want this to run and it's getting up right here so we're going to look inside the column sheet and everything's been commented out but it's going to be on the worksheet change event so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uncomment these out let's get rid of that here i'm going to uncomment that out here i'm going to look for the worksheet change event on e4 or g4 if something changes but i need to make sure that if both of them are empty don't do anything so we're just simply checking if e4 does not equal empty but g4 does equal empty exit the sub if g4 does not equal empty but e4 equals empty exit the sub basically all i need to do is i need to make sure that both of these have a value in it if one has a value doesn't have a value we're going to exit the sub if both of them are cleared then simply just clear it out so if i clear this one out nothing's going to happen because one has a value if i clear this one out then something's going to happen it's going to load that list and there it is so here's a list we can get rid of these samples we can bring them out of the way we don't need them here okay so here we have our list automatically updated i think that top position could be just a little bit higher so i want to set that so that's all we have to do so we're going to turn off events we're going to run the macro that we just went over and we're going to turn on the events i'm going to go into that macro just adjust that top position that top position is based on d6 we can do minus three just a little minus four something like that just a little bit higher okay so just simply making a change is going to automatically update that okay so again what if i want to do a filter search so again only one value is available so nothing's going to happen until both of them either both of them have values or both of them are cleared that's the only time that macro is going to run i want to search based on ball perfect so now we take a look inside our results we see that anything with an item name of ball wishlist is false all these item names contain the word ball in some form or fashion the results are here the pictures come here we loop through the results from odd to even rows we put in the the name and the description and the picture gets created and the picture gets put placed in that and that's exactly all we have to do we need to make this a little bit squared this sample should be squared notice how they kind of stretch out we want to make sure that square so i'll do point i'm going to check the height of this and the height of that we want to make sure is 0.63 what we can do here we want to make it uniform i'm going to drop this down here just to make sure everything lines up and I'm going to go with on the height 0.6 for all of them and that's going to be sufficient and I want to make sure this one has is 0.6 and 0.6 so that way you see it's not a little bit stretched out it should be perfectly square so we just double click and enter here and it's going to automatically okay that looks better now they're squared up just the way it, just the way it looks good looks good again I'll, I think I'll make this look how it's a little bit up I want to make this a little bit smaller here so we'll do point 0.58 and 0.58 so what that's going to do that sample anytime we make a change to that sample it's automatically going to adjust because I don't want it to bleed over here so we don't want it exactly the same size now what about clear filter clear filter all I'm going to do is run a macro that's going to basically clear both of the fields and then it's automatically going to update so let's take a look at that right next list items next up we have clear filter filter again all I need to do e4 g4 clear the contents the macro will automatically run on the change event there so we don't need to worry about running the macro all we need to do is take this button that we've created and assign that macro so we're just going to paste that in here and click OK all right so now when we click clear filter it's going to clear that out and everything's going to get created nicely okay very good we understand that these samples we can move them out of the way so we see how that those are working now next up what do I want to happen when I select on either the picture 
or this item, I want to load this in. So how do we make that happen? Well, there's two things we can do. We can assign a macro inside here using on action. I could do something like on action and then assign that macro here, or I can assign the macro uh, to uh, the sample shapes, which would also get it done. Because when I assign a macro to a sample shape and that sample shape gets duplicated, then it gets duplicated for everybody. Okay, so how, what is that macro that we're gonna run? That macro is gonna be called item select. Now, when I run that macro, what do I want to do? If you notice inside these names, let's take a look at this is called collection item 30, collection picture 30, or collection item six, or collection picture six. So I want to extract this item ID. I want to take this item ID and I want to place it directly inside of B2. And then we're going to run a macro that's going to load it. So the first thing we need to do is take that ID and put it in, put it in B2. So how do we do that? Well, we see C-O-L-L -L item, that's eight characters. We also see that the picture C-O-L L P I C T is also eight characters, then eight characters plus the ID. So if I remove the first eight characters, then automatically it's going to leave us with our ID. And we do that very specifically because we've taken these names and we've given it exactly the same number of characters than the ID. So to do that, we simply have to take eight characters, the first left eight characters and replace them. Here's the replace with nothing, with nothing. And we're going to place that value directly inside B2. Then we're going to run the macro item load. So all I need to do is take this macro here and assign that macro to both sample shapes. And then when they get duplicated, so I'm going to hold down the control right here. I'm going to right click and paste in that value. That's the macro. Click OK. Again, another way to do that here, if we want to do that, simply uh, there's two ways to do that. So we create that picture. And we could do it anywhere in here. So we could do on action equals, and then we could put in that. Okay, so that's all we have to do. Okay, I think that equals fine. Okay, let's check it. Okay, so that's all we'd have to do, just run that. Okay, so when we run that macro, right? We've already run it, I've run it. Let's do double check it, clear that macro. It's now gonna run. So now we see we can now select on it. So when I select on it, that macro is going to run. Let's fix that. It's looking for something that doesn't exist yet. Let's take a look at what it's looking for here. Let's run it one more time and see, I didn't catch that, that uh, error name here. Okay, it's looking for item picture. We have not created that. We actually we created it, we just need to name it. This is the item picture here. We get to give that a name, okay? So we're going to reset that. And it is this item picture that gets filled. We just need to name it. Item pick, okay? Perfect. Okay, so now what we can do is we can continue on. So what it's gonna do is gonna load that item picture in that square, if it exists. Okay, but we need to create that. So let's take a look at that. That's the next macro available. And we can see it's working. So let's take a look inside that so we've got up here we've let's go back into this macro here and we've covered here the list load we've covered the select right select but we didn't cover the next macro when we make a selection this is the macro that runs called item load that's this macro that's what i'm going to go over with you right now that's the macro that automatically adds all this information along with the tabs which we're going to go over okay great so we want to make sure that B3 contains a value. B3 is very important because that is the row that's associated, that calculated row that's associated with that item. If that's empty, we cannot load in. So we can let the user know to please select a correct item to load. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to take what's in B3, and that's the item row, and we're going to put it in a long variable called item row. Then we're going to use data mapping. And basically what I've done is I've mapped all of those fields up here j3 m3 j5 those are all mapped to here as we can see j3 m3 j5 they're all mapped accordingly so to do that all we need to do is run a loop for all of the columns for the last column all the way to column 22 here and make sure that those values when we find the row we're going to take whatever values that i made we're going to place it in j3 whatever value is found on in column c we're going to place it in m3 so we're going to use data mapping we're going to run that loop for the item column 2 to 222, 2 to 22. Column A, the item ID, we've already had, we already have that item ID directly inside B2, so we don't need to do that. That's why we can start in column two. So we're gonna run that loop. It's gonna add all that data, all of that data into just, with just three lines of code. We're gonna extract that range directly from the co collection database, row one and the item column. So here's the range, M5, J5, whatever. And we're gonna put that, whatever that range is, we're gonna take whatever's in the database into the, in, from the item row 
and the item column and we're going to bring it and put it directly in that range accordingly then what we're going to do is we're going to run a macro called we're going to run a macro called load tags we're going to run a macro called attachment refresh and we're going to run a macro called display picture now we're going to go over those macros individually but basically one macro refreshes these tags here one macro refreshes these attachments here and another macro displays that picture okay so let's go over that so the first one's called add a tag let's go in order so we can keep the order i want to add a tag now so add a tag is this basically if i want to select that let's assign the macro to that so we're going to assign the macro sorry it's a little bit off the screen just right click and i'm going to go this workbook we're only going to focus on that workbook and we're going to look at item add a tag that's the macro that we want to assign when i click on that now we can then add a tag test tag so when i do that it's going to add that tag item has been saved i think i'm going to get rid of that step i don't like that save it's kind of nice but i don't really like it in other words i want to be able to once they add a tag i want to save it but let's may not be necessary let the user save it so item add a tag we're going to get the tag name as a string that tag name is going to be based on that input box you just saw it very quickly please enter the tag name what is an input box it's this right here when i collect on the oops i <laughs> deleted one tag <laughs> gotta be careful of that i just deleted a tag so that's kind of easy so it's this called add tag this is the input box please enter the tag name so it's a very very simple way as opposed to using a user form to get the user to add some data and that's simply called an input box and that input box can take on a message and a title here and a few more other things if we want so if the tag name equals empty we're going to exit the sub okay so then this is the one i don't really want to when we add a tag i don't really want to run this save and update just yet i just want to run this load tags it's going to be a little quicker right so if i add a tag now and i put test tag four right it's going to just click okay and it's going to run it. it's going to be a lot quicker i like that but the issue is then if they click on something else that tag's not going to be saved so that's the issue so if they click on without saving or updating that's kind of important in fact saving or updating let's assign that because that's the one we're going to go into just about now so we're going to assign that macro and then of course save it it's going to be called item save or update right here clicking okay okay so let's continue on with this macro so once we get whatever they've entered we're going to get it in this string variable if it's empty we're going to exit the sub out now what we're going to do is i want to take that information if we take a look inside where are all these tags stored well we know that they're inside here inside column i think it was u here column u here so we know where they're stored as data and they're comma separated so everything that gets added so what we want to do is i want to when we bring them over i'm bringing them over into b25 so if i look inside here and i look in cell b25 we see all of these tags are located right here that tag four that tag four so what i want to do is i want to determine if there's nothing here what i what i i want to just simply add the tag however if there's some data here i need to add a comma then a tag so basically that's all i need to determine we're going to determine that right now if b25 equals empty we're simply taking b25 and it's going to equal the tag name meaning it's the first tag to be placed however if it's not empty i need to add a comma and the tag relatively simple the call the b25 equals whatever's currently there and a comma no spaces and the tag name so that's so if we take a look inside this we see it's tag four if i add a tag here tag five and click OK. It's simply going to then add that. You see how it just said added tag five. So here I'll show you that one more time, and then I'll just put in tag six. Okay, and then oops six, and then click OK. So it's going to add. It's going to keep adding that tag. So it's adding them as we go. All right, great. So we know that we can add the tag. Now you saw this macro called load tags. How do we get that to load in these shapes? It's very very nice. How, how does that happen? Well, to do that, what we want to do is we basically want to loop through all the tags. Now, to load them, I have a sample. If we look down here, somewhere around here, I've got a sample tag here. And that sample tag is named sample tag shape. Oops, I lost that X there, that close there. It is right there. <laughs> kind of hard to see there because it's a green. I've got a green background. So this, we've also got to delete. The X is actually called delete tag sample. So what we need for every single tag, I need to duplicate these. 
for this one, I need to, of course, assign a macro to that. So we have, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate these shapes for every single tag. So for every time, for every single tag, how do we know the tags? Well, they're separated by commas. If what we use, we can use an array and then we split it using the comma as a delimiter, and I'll show you exactly how that works. We can then loop through all the tags, creating shapes and delete icons for each of those tags. Okay, so to do that, we're going to do that right now, called item load tags. The first thing what we want to do, of course, is to delete any existing tags. Basically, we're going to refresh the tags. So this one's called item tag two, the name of it. And this is called, oops, I don't mean to close that. I'm deleting tags. Okay, so we deleted that. Okay, so this one's called tag delete two, tag delete two. You know what, what we can do? We might want to, notice how I just accidentally deleted it. I think I'm going to add a confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete this tag? I think it's kind of important. So we'll do that. <laughs> so basically what we want to do is we want to load the tag. So we want to delete all the existing tags first. So again, we're going to use the item shape in the shapes. We're going to look through every shape in the sheet. Anything called item tag, we're going to delete it. Anything called tag delete, we're going to remove it. So that's going to involve it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to, if B25 is empty, meaning there's no tags at all, we can then basically exit the sub. There's no tags, we can remove it. Because all of our tags are going to be located inside B25. I want to set an initial left position. That initial left position is going to be right around here. Notice that we've got the tags are bleeding over. You see this text right here? It's right in here. Actually, it's right. Oops, let's go. Let's get out of there. So this text is bleeding. You see this text? Oh, it's all I call it bleeding. It's bleeding all the way over here. All I need to do is just put a space right here, or I can right justify this. That would work. So the space is going to take care of that, and it's going to stop that from bleeding. All right, so let's continue on. Let's refresh that list and then move on. That means the text is going to spread all out here, and I don't want that tag text. I just put a space in here to stop that. Okay, continuing on with the macro. I want to set that initial left position based on I26. So that's the cell that's right here, I26. And I want to set the initial top position also based on I26 plus 2. I don't want it right on top. I also want to get create an array. Now this tag is an array. So if we take a look up here, we see it's called tag array as string, tag array as string. So once we have that with the brackets here, we can then move down into that. Oops, let's go ahead and update that right here. Okay, so continuing on, when we load those tags, I want to use a split. Remember, I've got the comma as the delimiter. So whatever's in B25, I want to split it using an array, tag array with comma delimited. Then what we can do is we can loop through all of them. Now the rays always start on zero, so we can run a loop for the tag number. It's a long variable equals zero to the last. We don't know the number, so we can determine it using the U bound, the upper bound number in the array. It's always going to start at zero. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the shape. The only thing that I don't want to do, notice each one has a number. This is called tag number one, but our arrays start in zero, so I just want to increase it. I want to create a unique number for every single array. This is called tag item two. This is called uh, tag delete one, tag delete two, so each one has a unique name. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to take our sample tag shape we remember correctly the name of that shape that's the shape that's located over here and that's called sample tag shape i want to duplicate that so we're going to give it a very unique name the item tag and the tag number if we remember our tag numbers start on zero right here but i don't want our tag so i'm going to add one because i want our first tag number to be one so we're adding one to do that then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on that brand new tag we've created. We're going to put some text in there. That text is going to be the tag array based on the tag number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, that's going to give us the value, the value in that array, those delimited. So the first comma separated value. So basically what that means is if I take a look at this, tag array 0 is going to be this one right here, Chris Middleton. That's the one that's going to be 0. This is going to be tag array one and two and so on and so forth. It always starts at zero. So we're going to take that. We're going to put it in the text frame. Okay. Once I have that text inside there, I want to set the auto size to true. And if you notice, some of these are longer, some of these are shorter. So I want to set that width to be variable based on the text. So again, we're the width of the shape is going to be automatically sized based on the text. So we're going to set that to true. 
but I do want to set the width a little bit larger, right? And so we're going to take that width. It's already set to the cell, but I want to make it larger. Why do I want to make it larger? Because I need room for the delete button. So that's very important. So we're going to add 12 different pixels onto that to make space for the delete button. Make space for delete icon or button. Okay, so we've got the space for that. Then what we want to do, I want to set a fixed height. That fixed height, I want always to have, now the width doesn't necessarily need to be fixed, but the height does. Now what I want to do is I want to add, keep adding them to the left position until it gets beyond this. I don't want it to go beyond here. So if the left position gets too far over, I want to keep incrementing the left position. If it's too far over, I want to add the row down. So we need to keep incrementing this. So if the left position plus the width is greater than the position of column N, we take a look at column N. So if it's more than this, then what we need to do is we need to reset the left position back to column I and we need to also increment the top position lower. So again, we need to do those two things that reset that left position based on column I and also update the top position 20 pixels down. Okay, so that's all we need to do. Then we just need to set the left position and the top position of that shape. That's it. That's all we have to do with the actual tag. But what about the delete? The delete is very, very similar. We're going to delete, duplicate that sample, except I'm going to add, of course, a macro to that. We're going to give it a name called tag delete and the tag number plus one. We're going to focus on that, right? We're going to set the exact same left position, except this time we're adding additional width to that based on the width of the item tag, right? So basically what I want to do is I want oh, I keep deleting that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're going to fix that for sure. Uh, what I want to do is I hold down the control and select it so because I want to show you. So this is the left position. This is the width of it. If it's all the way over here, it's going to be that's the width of it. We can't see it now. The width of it minus the width of that. So minus is going to be right about here. So that's exactly what I mean. Plus the width of the shape, plus the width of that text shape, minus the width of the delete icon, minus two. So that's going to place it right there. Then I want to assign a macro to that on action remove tag so that's going to remove the tag that's the macro that we're going to go over next then i want to set the left position i want to increment that the left position equals the left position of whatever the left position of the value is plus three so that's going to reset the left position resetting the left position based on whatever the left position of the item tag is plus three okay so that's going to set it up okay now that we have that we want to remove the tag and here's where we need to add that macro here okay so what i'm going not macro that line of code we've got the macro so we're going to do mrs delete i got that on on auto hotkey something like that are you sure you want to delete this tag and if if it's delete and we'll just call this delete tag this is that way we don't delete it because uh, i've deleted it by accident a bunch of times okay so now when i try to delete it right it's going to ask me are you sure you want to delete it so that's a little bit better okay so deleting the tag how do we do that so what's important is we need when we decide to delete i need to extract this number number one that's very important because if i know the number one what i can do is i can extract the tag i know that item tag one whatever the text of this is is going to be the text of the tag that we have to delete so we're going to extract that are you sure you want to delete it okay if b25 is empty right we're going to exit the sub out we need to get the tag number so what we're going to do is we're going to take the name of the shape that called it what's the name of the shape that called it it's called tag delete and then one or two or whatever it is but if i remove the text tag delete it's going to leave us with that number that is the tag number that i want to put into this variable this long variable called tag number so we're going to use the replace and we're simply going to remove this text and we're going to replace it with nothing that's going to extract the tag number it's going to put it right in here okay there's two ways to do that right what we can do is we can split this let's see i think this is not necessary i'm going to comment this out i don't think that's necessary so basically the remove tag is basically the item so this is the tag that we're going to remove this is a string variable basically again item the tag number item tag again let's look at that the text frame the text of this so what it's going to do it's going to look at this shape here it's going to take this shape we know the number whatever the text in there is going to put that into a variable and that variable is going to call rem tag remove tag if the tag number equals one if it's the first one what do i need to do if it's the first one i need to remove the tag and i need to remove the comma but if it's not right if it's the last one what do i need to do i just need to remove that and remove the remove the comma before it. if it's the first one i need to remove the comma after 
if it's not the first one, I need to remove the comma before and the tag. So that's going to help. Either way, either way, it would work just fine. Why is that important? Because the last tag, the last one, doesn't have a comma, right? So I can't remove the one after. So I always want to remove the one before, except if it's in the first position. So that's what we're going to do. Determine if it's in the first position. If it is the first position, we're going to take whatever's currently in B25. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the replace command. And I'm going to replace the tag and the comma after. So that's the, that's only remember that's only if it's in the first position. First position, going to remove the tag and the comma, and that's going to leave us with just that. So it's going to leave us just like that. Okay. However, what if it's in a subsequent position, not in the first? Then in that case, what I want to do is I want to remove the tag, the comma, then the tag, the comma and the tag. So it's just basically we're separating the comma into different. So in that case. We're going to remove the comma, then the tag. So the only difference is the comma, then the tag, or the tag, then the comma. So that's the only difference, whether it's in a subsequent first position or the subsequent position. And that's all we have to do. It's gonna, that's it. And then we can decide if we want to save it, if we want, and we're going to reload the item tags, and then we can save it if we want to. Maybe we won't save it. And so if we do not save it, the, the user has to save it. It's kind of a, depends it's up to you so if I if I remove a tag and I say yes I want to remove that tag we can say yes and it's going to remove it however it's not saved so if I decide that I want to refresh it again it's not going to be saved whichever one we are at we're at the Chris basketball I don't know which one that is all the way down here so we can then add that up and it's right here so if I click that if I click that notice that that tag didn't get removed because it's, we didn't decide to save it. So it's kind of a up to you. Do we want to save it automatically or do we want to give the user a second chance to, to, to redo? Same thing with add a tag. Do we want to add a tag and force the user, user to save it or not? So it's, it really depends on up to you. Okay, great. So we'd see how we're removing tags. So again, all I need to do again is just click this. Do I sure you want to do and click yes and the tag's gone. Okay, very, very cool. So what about new item? Now, brand new item. So that covers us for tags. We've learned how to add tags and remove tags. So very, very easily. Cool. And I really like that. And of course, we, again, we can filter by those tags as we saw already. Now what we want to do is we want to create a brand new one. So what I'm going to do, new item, assign the macro here, and that's going to be called item new. So we're going to scroll down here and it's going to call it item add new right here. Okay, once we have that, what I would like to do is I would like to go through that macro with you. It's relatively simple. First thing what we want to do is we want to remove all the tags, right? Anytime we remove, oops, this thing got misplaced here. I want to remove all of the tags because we, want, we may want to refresh the tags when we create a brand new item or when we load an existing item. So the first thing we certainly want to do is remove any existing tags. And to do that, we can simply just do the same loop as we did before. I want to clear out a bunch of fields. We don't need to go over all these fields, but all the fields are going to clear it out. I want to set the wish list B11 to false, right? I want to make sure the default and that wish list is located in B11. So if you remember, if this goes to true, our checkbox gets checked. If it goes to false, our checkbox is unchecked. So we're going to set B11 to false as a default, and we're going to set the item pick visible as false. This picture I want hidden, so visible equals false is going to hide that picture until we actually display a picture. And we're going to select J3. J3 is the item name in which we want the user to enter that item name. Okay, very good. That's it for the new. What about if we want to add a picture? Add a picture is here. How do we do that? So that's the pick that we're going to add here. So add a main picture. So I'm going to right click that, assign macro, and then we're going to be called item add picture. So item add picture right here, clicking OK. That's the next macro that we're going to go over. So when I want to add a picture, it's going to do just that. Let's debug that, fix that, filters, delete. No, we don't need that. OK, so now what we're going to be doing is we are going to automatically be able to give the user the ability to add that picture. How do we do that? Well, the best thing what we'd want to do is we just want to take that item picture as a file dialog. We're going to set it based on the file picker. We're picking a file and we certainly need a picture folder. If it's empty or it doesn't exist, we're going to let the user know or we're going to browse for the picture folder and then we're going to assign it. If it still doesn't exist, we're going to exit the sub. Browse for picture folder is the macro located here. Browse for picture it just allows us to browse for that folder here. This we don't need here. It's not part of this training here. We don't need icons in here. Okay, so continuing on with our, uh, let's go back into here. We want to make sure we're in the right one and we're going to close that out. Okay, so browse for picture folder. We know we're going to move in through it. We're going to focus on that item picture. We're going to give it select item picture. 
I want it to only have the filters based on pictures, JPG, PNG, JPEG, or GIF. So that's the one main you saw when we click item picture, the same one, shouldn't say icon. So I'm gonna fix that, it's not an icon picture. So we want it to do select item, it should be item picture. Item picture. Then if they have not selected anything, we're going to go to no selection. It's going to go all the way down here and skip out of it. If they have selected something, what I want to do is put that inside a path. So picture path is simply going to be that picture folder and of access and the directory. The directory of the select item basically means the item name like uh, basketball.png. This would be the item name. We're going to assign that. So this is going to give us that full file path of where we want to put it. I want to put it inside this picture folder, which is located here. So I want to place it directly in there. I do want to check to see if it's ex if it already if we're browsing if the select item equals the picture path, then we don't need to skip the copy. Then we skip the copy. What does that mean? That means if we're adding a picture and I've already selecting from the folder itself, that means we don't have to copy into this folder because we're already selecting a picture from this folder. So we don't need to copy it into this picture folder. Okay, so that's important. So that means if the selected path is equal to the new path, then we can skip to copy over. Okay, if it already exists in the same name that we wanna kill it, we wanna remove that if it's already there in the same name. And also what I want to do is I want to then copy the file from its current location into the new folder. So it's going to copy to, to new location. Okay, great. So now once we have that, what we want to do is I want to take that picture name and I want to put it inside B26. That picture name, it's home. It's going to be right here, B26. So that picture name right here, I wanted to put it there. It is that picture name that we will use to save an update into that. And remember B26 takes on that picture name. So that's where it gets saved. So that's why we're putting it inside B26. I want to run a macro call to refresh the attachments. That might not be necessary on this because they're kind of separate. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I want to display the picture and then I want to save and update the item. So again, let's take a look and see how that would work. If I add a main picture and I want to add this basketball, clicking OK, it's going to automatically update that. We're going to get a message to say the item has been saved and we're going to refresh it so that that brand new one gets automatically updated here. Okay, very good. So if I want to update that, right, if it's in the incorrect picture and I see that it's incorrect, I want to go back. I just select it, make sure we select add the main picture, and then we can select the correct or previous basketball, which is now I don't remember which one it was. It was this one right here. Okay, clicking OK, and it's going to reassign that, and it's been saved out. So again, we're doing two things. We're showing the picture, which we're going to go over next, and then we're saving the update. So how do we show that picture? This is relatively easy. As you see, it's not many macros. We're going to then first what i want to do is i want to hide this picture and that's i want the reason we're hiding this shape item picture is because if for some reason the file path is incorrect or there is no picture or there's some issue with the picture then this shape is hidden the only time we're going to show it is if we do have an accurate picture so the first thing we're going to do is hide or call it picture shape hide picture shape okay if b26 is empty or the picture folder is empty we're going to exit this up without anything inside b26 the picture name or the folder in which where the pictures are stored. If those are empty, we can exit out. Okay, next up, what I want to do is I want to set the picture name based on whatever's in B26. The picture folder, of course, that's going to come directly from that named range. We're going to put that into a variable called pick folder. Then we're going to create that picture path. It's going to be based on the picture folder, the backslash, and the picture name. This is the full picture. Okay, great. If for some reason there's an issue with that picture path, it means empty, we're going to exit the sub out. We're going to take the item picture. We're going to fill it, picture path, See, this is a lot easier than positioning and sizing the shape, moving it and centering it. A lot less code, one line of code. And then we're simply going to make sure that it is visible. That's it. That's all we have to do. Okay, very good. You also saw that we were able to save item, save it. And that's the one that's automatically already assigned to this button here, save and update. So it is that, that macro that we're going to go over right now called item, save and update. It has already been assigned to this button. So when we collect it, it automatically gets saved. So let's go over that macro right now. First thing we want to do is make sure that they've entered an item name. If J3 is empty, we're going to let the user know to please make sure to enter an item name before saving and exit out of that sub. That would be required. We also need to determine is it a new item or is it an existing item? B3 is going to tell us. If it is empty, we know it is a new item. So to do that, we're going to let the user know. The item row, we're going to set that item row going to be based on the first available row based on the collections database. A, the first available row. That's going to be that first available row. 
We also want to set that new item ID. That next item ID is going to come directly from B4. We're going to place it into B2. We're also going to place it inside column A in the first available row right down here. So we're going to do that A in the first available row here. It's going to take on B2. That's going to set the item ID. If it's an existing item, all we need to do is just extract the item row directly from B3. Then again, we're also going to use data mapping, this time in reverse, in order to take any values from J3, from M3, J5, and place them in the appropriate row as we move from column 2 all the way to the last column, 22. So that's simply in the reverse. And that's all we're going to be doing here, is saving the data to the database, and then a message box saying the item has been saved. We are going to reload the item list. Lastly is item delete. That is the item that we are going to use. We're going to assign that to this button here, assigning that macro, and then item delete is right here. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and create a brand new item. We're going to create a test item. Everything gets cleared out. So we'll go into test item, and we don't need to fill in all the details because that's unnecessary. I just want to make sure status and type, those need data validation. So we're going to go into here, and we're going to go into the data validation. We're going to put in list, and if we take a look, we can use F3, and that's going to launch. We see that we have item types here, so we're going to add that in. First thing is status, clicking OK and OK, and then the next one is type, so data. Again, data validation here, list here, and then we see that we also have F3 is going to tell us that we have to put in here our status and click OK, type here. Clicking OK and OK. So now we have here our drop down list of on hand and we have our type here. OK, great. So we can add that in. All right. So simply we're going to save that item. We're not going to add anything else because we're going to delete it. We've got test item that's automatically updated. OK, very good. So test item here. We have it down here. Here it is right here. We've got that here. There's no picture, no description. Sufficient enough. We do want to delete that item. So that is what we're going to be doing right now. We're going to give the message box, are you sure you want to delete this item? If we're not, then we're going to exit the sub out of it. B3 is empty. We know it's not saved. B3 already has a row, so we can continue on. We are going to clear the contents of that row, not delete it. I'm going to take that row and I'm going to clear all the way from A1 all the way through column V. We're clearing the contents out. I don't want to delete it because I've got other stuff in here that's really important and I don't want to delete the entire row. I just want to clear the contents and then I'm going to resort the list based on our item ID, the lowest first, the last, and that's going to cl automatically clear out those blank rows. So to do that, we're going to use clear contents all the way to column V. We're going to determine the last row. If it's less than four, we're going to go to not say. We're just going to skip it. Based on that, the sort there, we're then going to focus on A4, and we want it ascending. A4 is that item ID, lowest to highest. We're going to set the range from A4 through V. That sets the range, and we're going to apply the sort. Okay, great. We're going to then going to run a macro called item new, which we saw, and reload the list. So if I want to delete this item that I've just created, we're going to select here, out of it, and are you sure you want to delete this item? Yes, it's going to clear it. Go to the add new screen, and it's also going to clear the item, so we see the item is no longer in this list. If I select the ad, another item, it is going to load that item. So delete is working just fine. Okay, great. That is the last macro in this module. Let's take a look at another one that I'd like to show you, and that is the change event. Well, we can start actually with our attachments. That's fine, okay? Because admin's not much. You just have the browse folder and uh, admin. I hope that was the wrong uh, workbook that I deleted. That's fine. Okay, saving that work. Then inside our admin, we only have one, and that is just this... Uh, Oops, let's click on here. It's just one macro and that's this browse. We don't have anything else. We do have some change event. This is what I wanted to go over with you right now. When I make a change to anything here, I want the format to be automatically changed here and I want the format to be changed. So for example, if we see website, this is not percentage, right? This is going to be text. I wanna make sure that text shows up here. However, if I decide I wanna change something, let's say I wanna add something here. If we see, we go into collectibles, we see this custom field six. Let's see if I put in five, five on here, right? It's just a five, five number. But what if I want to make this an amount field? So let's say we want uh, to put something in like, say, initial cost, okay? 
or upkeep cost or whatever, right? And we want to make it an amount field. If I click amount field, I want a default amount. I want to set the format here. And I also want to have that format change. Notice it changed the format here. So how do we do that? Well, that's going to happen on change event. So this is the change event that I want to show you. When a user makes a change to the field type, I want to do two things. I want to set the format here that the user can change. And I also want to then make that update here to whatever field it is. So let's take a look inside the admin before we get to the attachments and take a quick look at this. When a user makes a change on G7 through G12, G7 through G12, when there's a change, what do we want to do? Well, the first thing we want to do is determine the field type. I'm going to use the selection change. So the field type is going to be a string. That field type is going to be based on the target value. That field type is going to come right here. Okay, so we need to know that field type. It's going to be either text, amount, percentage, or date. So when the change is made, I'm going to use select case based on the field type. If it is a text, H and the target row gets that uh, A, okay, so we that at sign. If it's an amount, H and the target value gets this format. Percentage gets this format, date gets this format. Of course, you can change those. And of course, anything else gets also this at sign. Okay, so that's the general format. So that's how we're, so once this changes, now once we make a change here, if the user makes a change here, let's say they want a different percentage or they want to put some kind of, let's say, number format or they want to make a change to percentage and they make the change here, I want to then make that change accordingly inside the sheet so let's say the condition here's the condition 90 percent right so notice we have a 90 percent so 9.0 so we want to make sure to change that automatically adding that point in there we do need to add some zeros in there if we want those to show up after the decimal so how do we do that so how do we automatically make that happen so not notice it shows and that's going to be on again on another change event but this time the change event is based on column h so let's scroll down here and take a look at the change event on H. And this time we're going to dimension the row numbers long. The row number equals the target row. And we're going to select the case based on the row number because this way I need to make the change in actual fields. If the row number is seven, here's seven, what do we want to format? I want to make that change directly to custom field one. This is custom field one located in J19. If it's row number two, it's going to be M19. If it's row number three, it's going to be uh, J22 and so on and so forth. So that's what we're going to be affecting, M19. M, and we want, what we want to do is we want to change the format of that cell. And I want to change that format based on the target value. So that means if we make that change, if I want to add another zero here for something under the cost, I can do that and it's automatically going to change here. If we go into the collectibles, we see that now it's been changed here automatically. And that happens on change event, okay? So we can kind of see how that works quite well when we do that. If we just want a basic percentage, we can get rid of these and just add the basic percentage going there. So any change in here is gonna automatically affect that. And that happens directly in here. Change event, remember we're under worksheet change event. So any change event, it's gonna automatically format that cell based on the target value. So that's it, that's all we have to do to change those custom field formats automatically when we make that change here. Okay, great, now what we can do is we can get into the attachment. Now basically what I want to do is I wanna run a selection change. The first thing what I wanna do is a selection change event. If I make a selection on anywhere from 05 all the way through Q and down, I want, if it's a picture, I want it to load up. And that happens on selection change events. So that's the thing we're gonna focus on. So on the collect sheet, I've got it already here, but I've just commented out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uncomment it out. And we're gonna focus on that selection change event. If the user makes a selection of more than one cell, we're gonna exit the sub. That delete, if the user makes any selection of anything, I want that, notice that icon is gone right now. However, if they make a selection inside, I wanna show that delete icon. So how do we do that? Well, if they make a selection on 05 through Q, and this should be Q999, not Q, QO. Okay, so Q99 is nothing, and O doesn't equal empty, meaning if they select here, O is empty, so nothing's gonna happen. If O contains a value, I want something to happen. What do I want to happen? A few things. The first thing what I wanna do is I wanna take whatever row it's placed, and I wanna place that directly inside B6. That's the attachment row. The second thing that I want to happen is I want to display that a little delete icon. And lastly, I want to run a macro that's going to display the picture inside that shape. So we want all three of those things to happen. 
Okay, so the first thing that's gonna happen, B6 is gonna take on that target row. Second thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna display that little shape, that little icon, delete, attach button. Gonna display it in column R in the left position there, and also the top position of column R in that target row. And then we're gonna make sure that it is visible, okay? Also, the last thing is we're going to then display that picture. That is inside the attachment, so attachment display picture. That is the macros that we're going to be going over right now inside the attachment macros. First thing, we'll get to that display in a second, but I'll just go in order. So the first thing what we want to do is add attachments. So if I click add attachment, I want something to happen. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. We'll make that a little bit bigger here. And then we're going to assign a macro to the entire group of buttons. So we're going to click assign macro and that's going to be attach and then add right here, clicking okay. We also might as well do the others. So right click, assign a macro. This is gonna be attach and open that file. Also, I wanna add a main picture. We've already assigned that. And then to clear the picture, we need to do that. I don't even know if I created a macro for that. Uh, tie, let's see, brow item, clear picture. I don't see it here, so we'll create it. Okay, so we, ha we haven't done it yet, so we can clear the picture. So it's very, very simple. So we'll do that in the items. I'll do that right now. So item, sub item, clear picture. Oh, we need, I'm just going to make it visible. So let's see, we're going to call sheet dot shapes. And what is the shape name, right? We want to make sure that we have the shape name. If we take a look at the shape, we want just want to make it visible. It's called item pick, and we just need to make that hidden. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to change dot visible equals MSO false. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Assign this picture to that button, and that's it. I'm not really sure why we'd even need to do that, but it is here. We can do it. So paste that in here, clicking OK, and now we can clear the picture out. OK, if we select something else, it's going to show up, though. OK, very good. So we've got that. So let's take a look back inside the attachments and we're going to go with the add. So when I want to add an attachment, that's the that's the macro that we're going to do here. We're going to give the user the ability to add an attachment and we can select all files if we want. So when we do that, what we want to do is I want to make sure that it is a saved item, right? We, if we're adding an attachment, we need to make sure that they're actually adding attachment. We need that ID. That ID is critical, B2. It has to be saved already. So if B3 is empty, we need to prompt the user to first save the item. Why is it important? Because every single attachment has an item ID attached to it because we're going to filter by that item ID. And we're going to determine all the attachments based on a single item ID. So to do that, we need to make sure that we actually have a saved item. If B3 is empty, we know to let the user know to please save this item before adding attachments. Okay, if the picture folder is empty, we're going to let the user know to please add attachment or picture folder in the admin screen. We're going to set the picture folder to the variables we've done. That item ID is going to be based on B2. The attachment, we're going to set a file picker. Okay, we're going to delete any filters that might exist. It could create an error sometimes. So we can wrap in on error, resume next, and on error go to zero in case that filters are clear. In case I would delete any existing filters. Okay, so what we want to do is I want to add a filter. It's going to be any file type. Okay, so then we're going to get the user to, if it's have not selected anything, we're going to exit out. We're going to set that file name just as we did before, basically based on the directory of whatever selected item. B26 is going to take on that file name. I want to make sure that we're taking on that B26. It's going to take on the file name. Once we have that, we're going to attach that file name. Actually, this is wrong. I'm not going to get rid of that. Basically, what I want to do is, if I'm adding an attachment, that I do not need. Basically, B26 is for our picture, right? We're focused on pictures, so we had additional. So it shouldn't be in B26. B26 is only for the item in picture. However, anytime we add an attachment, we want to add it inside this database and we want to display it. Okay, so we don't need it in B26. But what we do need to do is create a form. Why is that important? When I add attachment, right, I want to make sure that there's a form. Once I select a picture here or any type of any type of file and click OK, what I want to do is I need, oh, let's fix, fix that up, picture folder. And we need, to, the reason is, to, again, the reason it's denied is because I'm trying to copy the pictures already in the folder. So how do we avoid that? Well, what we do is we ensure that we it's in the same folder if, right, dot selected items, one equals this already, that means it's already in the folder. We don't need to move it. Equals then skip copies. Go to skip copy, right? We don't need, it's already in the folder. We're browsing folder. And then we can just go right down here and then click skip copy. Okay, so if I do try to do the same thing, it, we won't have an issue. Okay, so let's select that again. Okay, we can select anything. Let's see, CR soccer ball, click OK. What that's going to do is going to uh, add this user form. We've got a user form here, call this S 
soccer, it's just called soccer ball. And then we can use description, soccer, SB description. Just put in something, okay? So that's the CR uh, soccer ball, Christian, Cristiano Ronaldo. Okay, now what we want to do is I'm just going to click save. Notice we've got the file name here. They can't change it. We've got a, we can change the file type here. Put anything we want, put it in description. We're going to save it. Once that gets saved, it's going to automatically be put up to the top and it's going to be displayed right here in the picture. Okay, that's going to be, of course, we can add any type of attachment. If it's a picture or a Word document or something, it may not be, it won't be a, uh, displayed, but any type of picture will be displayed. Okay, moving on. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to then save that. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing what we want to do when we add an attachment, we want to make sure that we extract all the information as we send. The last thing was this attached form show. If we take a look, we've got a user form here called attachment form, add attachments. We've got a name here. If we take a look at this, let's bring this over here so we can see it a little bit closer together. Attach name field. We have a file type, we have a description, and we have a file name field. We have a save button here, and we have a cancel button here. So if we take a look inside the code, we can just simply right click and view the code. Very simple, the cancel button is simply gonna unload the form, and the save button is simply going to save the form. It is that save that we're going to be going over now, that attach save. That's the macro that we're going to be going over right now, called attach save. Okay, so inside this form, what we wanna do is I wanna make sure that the name contains a value. If the name or the type are empty, let the user know to please add in a file name and type before saving. We're gonna extract the item ID that's gonna come from B2 of our collector sheet. We're gonna, item name is going to be also from J3. The file name is gonna come directly from this form and the file name. The attachment name is gonna come from the form name field, the attachment description is gonna come from the description field, and the file type is gonna come from the file type. I also want to get the extract the file extension, that's gonna come from the file name. We're gonna use the length of the file name and the right, because I want the right mode, it's gonna, we're gonna look for that period. Remember that period's in the file name. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extract that. So it's gonna extract the file extension. What does that look like? That file extension is gonna look like right here. It's gonna be DOCX, JPEG, PNG, or whatever. Okay, so basically that's the file extension and that's gonna help us. So we're gonna put that inside column. So basically what I need to do is I need to create a brand new row and then put in the item name and put in all this information inside the attachments database. So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Then unload that form, that's gonna hide that form and unload the values on the form. We've already taken all the fields and we've put them into variables so we don't need to have the form open, we can close it and unload it. Okay, we're gonna get that first available attachment row inside the attachments database here. Again, column A is gonna take on that item ID, column B and so forth. So basically all the values that we put into strings are going to now take them. Also on a row, the row is gonna go directly into column eight. So we need that as a formula. We're gonna run a macro called attach refresh. We'll get to that next. Then what we wanna do is I want to make sure if the 05 doesn't equal empty, then we're going to select it. The reason we want to do that is after this is I want to automatically select the first name, the first value here. That's gonna be the most recent one that we just added. So whatever we just add, we're going to select it. When we make that selection, it's going to display that picture. When we refresh it, what do we want to do? When I re run refresh, I wanna know all of the attachments for this given item ID located right here. So if I know the item ID is located in B2, we're gonna use an advanced filter just as we've done. I'm gonna put that B2, I'm gonna put that criteria right here. The results are going to come right here. We want the name, the file type, the description, and a row number. I want to bring all that information directly inside here. Now you say the row number, well, that's not here. It is actually here, however, it's been hidden. If I put general, we take a look at this and we expand our, we see that the row numbers are here, but I really don't want to see them. I know that they're there, I don't want to see them. So what I can do is give them a custom format. We're gonna go into general, we're gonna to go to more number formats, and we're gonna to go to custom and we're gonna give it two semicolons and that's going to hide those row numbers, two semicolons here. Okay, click, so it's gonna be hidden, but we know that they're there. If I select on a given cell, we can see that it appears in the formula bar. So we know that they're there. And that's important because if I decide I'm going to delete one, I need to know what row to delete. So very important for that. Okay, and I also need to extract the file name or extract some information. I need to know what database row it's located. 
it on. So when we refresh it, what we are going to do is we're going to basically make sure that we actually have a value. If there's no row, it not, has not been saved, or there's a missing ID, we're going to exit out. We want to clear out B6. Why do I want to clear out B6? That is a selected row because we're going to be selecting a new one. We can clear that out. I also want to clear out any values that are here. So all the way from 05, all the way through R, including column R, and all the way down, we want to clear out those values. So that's going to be done here. I want to make sure, again, the picture is going to be hidden unless you know, for temporarily, and then we'll display it again if it's a valid picture format. With the attachment database, we're going to focus again on the last row. We're going to run an advanced filter on that attachment database. The results are going to come here. Excuse me, the results are going to come here. The criteria is here, K2 through K3, and the original data is all the way to column H on row 3. So A3 through H, the criteria K2 through K3, results are N2 through Q2. Okay, the last row, we want to determine the last results row. If it's less than three, there's no data. If it's less than four, we don't need to sort it. I do want to sort it, and I'm going to sort it based on the row because I want the most recent at the top. So if I do row descending from the highest to the lowest, I know the most recent one that we added is going to be at the top. That's exactly what I want. So we're going to focus on that sort. It's going to be based on Q3, and we want descending the highest value first. You know, the range is going to be N3 through Q. And then what we're going to do is just simply going to run that sort. Then all we need to do is bring the data over. O5 through R in the last results row plus 2. This row starts at 5. Remember 5 here. This row starts at 3. So we need to compensate for that difference and add 2. Okay, great. So that's all we need to do to refresh the list. Okay, but what about displaying the picture? Attached display the picture. How do we display the picture of an attachment? If we remember correctly, when we add a brand new attachment, we're going to run a macro to display that picture. So how do we do that? Remember, adding, saving here, add a refresh. Display the picture here. When we select it, if I look at the selection change inside our column sheet here, and we look at the selection, remember we're selecting on that, we are going to display that picture when we select it. That's the macro that I'll be going over with you right now, display picture. We're going to focus on the collector's sheet here. The item pick, again, I want to make sure it's hidden temporarily. If B6 is empty, we're going to exit the sub. There's no selected row. I've got to have, I've got to know what row has been selected so that I can know whether we're going to be displaying something or not. So if B6 is empty, we're going to exit the sub out. We're going to set the select row, which is a long variable. And then what we're going to do is we want to know the attachment row. The attachment row, that's the database row for the attachment. Again, is located in column R. However, it's been hidden. So I want to know the picture name. Now, the name of the picture is going to be directly from column C. So if I look in the attachments, and a column C is going to be our file name. That file name is important. That file name combined with the folder path will give us our full file picture. So we're going to do that right now. The file extension, I'm going to extract from G. I need to know that file extension. If the file extension is PNG, JPEG, JPEG, or BMP, then I want to display the picture display picture. Okay, so once I've got that, I know it's a picture, I'm going to set the picture folder based on the picture folder. If B26 is empty or the picture folder is empty, exit the sub in case there's no picture. Okay, I don't think this is not important here. This should be picture name. Okay, if picture name is empty or the folder is empty, we can exit the sub. Picture path, we're going to set the picture folder and the picture name. That's the full file path of the picture. If it's, if it's incorrect, we're going to exit the sub. Again, we're going to fill the user picture and set the item picture as visible. That's all we have to do. Great, so what about when I want to open a picture? If I want to open attachment, if I select on something, and I want to click open, and I want to open that picture in whatever viewer I have, I can do that too, or whatever document it is, right? No matter what document, I want to open that. So that's the macro that we've assigned to that. That's relatively easy. Again, we need to make sure that we have a selected row inside B6. I need to know the attachment row, which is in column R. Again, I need to know that full picture path. If it's empty or issues, exit the sub. We're simply going to take that picture path and we're going to use this workbook, follow hyperlink, picture path. That's going to open the selected file regardless of the file type. Lastly, deleting the file. We need to make sure that when we delete a file, that's the one when we select here. That is the macro that's been already assigned here. I'll do it again just so you can watch. And that's going to be the attachment delete. So right here, attach, delete, click OK. So when I delete something, if I want to delete it, I want to remove that picture. How do we do that? Well, again, we want to give the user, are you sure you want to delete this attachment? If 
B6 equals empty, then making sure that we have a selected row. That's going to go into B6. Again, we need to get the row in R to make sure there's a value here. The column sheet, item shapes, item picture, we're going to hide this temporarily picture. We're going to get that attachment row from column R. I'm going to delete this time. We're deleting the entire row. Why am I deleting and not clearing the contents? Because there's nothing really else here. We can delete and we can delete it. There's no list or anything, so I can delete. So I'm going to delete the entire row. Then I'm going to run the uh, refresh again, and then I'm going to select 05. Selecting that will automatically load whatever's here, if there is anything. So again, if I decide I'm going to delete this, clicking delete, we'll get the confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete? Click OK. And then you see it's been deleted, and we've selected here. But there's nothing. There's a seed template. We don't have anything there. But this one we do. OK, great, great. So that's cool. So we've gone over. And that is the last macro. So we've gone over everything. Let's do a little re refresher. In this training, I was able to show you how you could create a very, very cool list of items, include details, and also we showed you how we could automatically filter based on a dynamic filter, based on anything we want, simply by using that, creating a dynamic filter. And we can also clear the filter very, very easily by clearing that. These shapes can be created and placed to show item names. We can click on them. That will be the macro to load the information. We also showed you a brand new and very unique way to add, update, edit tags simply by just entering some information and adding that tag super easily. And then, of course, also being able to filter by those brand new tags. Oh, deleting tags, very, very easy. We can just remove them. So tags are a great way that we can use to filter items. Also, we showed you attachments. Attachments are really great. We can then add attachments, open attachments, update attachments, and also the main picture and clearing the picture. This has been a really, really cool training. There's so much more I'd like to add on this. What are your ideas? Join us on Patreon coming up so that I can get your ideas in. I'm thinking about a dashboard, so I'm thinking about, I've got a lot of ideas that I'd love to add to this, but I want to know your feedback, what you think. Join us on Patreon. I'll include the link below. Join up right now. Comment on the post on Patreon and let me know what features you want to see on this. We could create, a, there's a lot we could do. I cannot wait. So thanks again for joining me on this training and we'll see you next week.